Don't change the channel. Don't you touch that channel. Uh, don't change the channel. Dr. Maria will be preaching the gospel. Don't change the channel. Jonah chapter 4, verse 5. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. The word of God for the people of God, you can take your seat. And so once again, the year theme Kingdom Watchers, the series Break My Will, the masters called Jonah, and the sermon topic today, Anger Chamber. Anger Chamber. I want to speak about anger. Anger sounds harsh. It sounds like a cruel word. It certainly isn't a word that invokes righteousness and holiness. Yet the fact is that anger is real. Anger is so real that the Bible speaks to it. The Bible speaks of anger not so that we are at liberty to be angry, but so that when anger is found within us, we can quickly deal with it before it deals with us. Anger unresolved festers into a mountain that only blocks the angry person from moving beyond the moment of initial anger to the place that God would have them to be. Church, never stay in a place called anger. According to Google, when a person gets angry, the body reacts by increasing heart rate and blood pressure and releasing elevated amounts of certain hormones. Although the body is able to adjust to normal levels of stress, significance, and accumulated stress can contribute to disease and eventual death. When you are angry, God has created a natural way to restore the inner balance of your body. Or to put it another way, God will take you back home. God will take you back to homeostasis. Balance. If you don't get back to balance, your anger issue will issue sad decrees to your body. Now, according to www.everydayhealth.com, here are some dangers of being angry. One, an angry outburst puts your heart at great risk. Most physically damaging is anger's effect on your cardiac health. In the two hours after an angry outburst, the chance of having a heart attack doubles. Two, anger ups your stroke risk. If you're prone to lashing out, beware. One study found there was a three times higher risk of having a stroke from a blood clot to the brain or bleeding within the brain during the two hours after an angry outburst. Three, it weakens your immune system. If you're mad all the time, you just might find yourself feeling sick more often. Hmm. Four, anger problems can make your anxiety worse. If you are a warrior, <laughs> it's important to note that anxiety and anger go hand in hand. Five, anger is also linked to depression. Numerous studies have linked depression with aggression and angry outbursts, especially in men. Six, Hostility 
can hurt your lungs. Not a smoker. You could still be hurting your lungs if you're perpetually angry, hostile. Seven, anger can shorten your life. Is it really true that happy people live longer? <laughs> Stress is very tightly linked to general health. If you're stressed and angry, you'll shorten your lifespan, says Friscard. End of those quotes. Now, the greatest manual ever written, the Bible, says this about anger. Ephesians 4, 26, 27, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. If you give place for anger, hear me, anger will take the place and build more space. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 5 says, Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. You cannot operate in charity and be easily provoked and then stay in the place of provocation. James 1, 19 and 20, it reads, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Church, you cannot be angry and please God. Now, now listen to the next statement to go and blow you out of the water with this one. Listen, listen to it. You can be angry and obey God. Yeah. However, your obedience does not become a kingdom seed and will not be prosperous for you. My Lord Jesus, I hope somebody's hearing this. You see, Jonah obeyed God, and yet we will see that he obeyed God angrily. Hey, so let's visit the text of today as I deal with the following Three points. Point number one, consumed with anger. Point number two, covered by God. And then point number three, contemplate the lesson. Contemplate the lesson. Point number one, consumed with anger. Verse one, but, look at that. Mm -mm -mm. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. Now, the final chapter of this book starts out with the word, but. So just what has been canceled out by God? <laughs> What's canceled out right at the beginning? It's the first word, you all. Recall how sorry Jonah seemed, I said seemed, he seemed to be when the shipmates were at risk of their lives. He was sorry for putting their lives at risk, but not sorry for wanting to escape giving God's message to Nineveh. Let's be clear. Recall how sorry Jonah seemed when he was trapped in the valley of the great fish. Well, he was sorry to be in that place. He was not sorrowful enough to be humbled to complete God's will and go to that place called Nineveh. Sadly, the obedience of Jonah in doing God's will amounted to very little for Jonah personally. Hebrusha, what a weird thought, a strange thought, that in obeying God, you can bless the kingdom, bless the congregation, bless Bermuda, but God look at you and say, just finish my will. It ain't about you. You ain't getting any credit because you still got a dirty attitude. You still got a negative attitude. Go with something else. Hmm. You see, God 
looks beyond what you do. Hey, hey. And he, he pierces between your soul and your spirit to see and to know why you do what you do. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Your actions can fool God. Hey, <laughs> Your actions may be able to fool this person and that person, but God is using his laser beam of vision, just like Jesus piercing into the seven churches of Revelation. And he knows why you're together. He knows what you believe. He knows why you do what you do. God is sharp. He's sharp, you all. God has vision beyond any laser beam and will always know why you do what you do. Even when you obey God, you get the true credit, the prosperous credit, the credit that continues to multiply to yourself only when your heart is right, only when your motive is right. My God, that's why you got to constantly be like the psalmist David. Search me, God. Know me. Try my reins, my kidneys. Come on now. Huh? Separate the toxic me. My God, let me release out of my bowels what shouldn't be within me. Come on, this is what God is saying. He knows we're flesh. He knows we're carnal. And he's saying, I know that. And that's why you got to flush you out. Hey, clean me out. Let me go through spiritual renal dialysis. My God, that I can be clean before God. And get this. Get this. Jonah, you may fool the shipmates. You may fool yourself. However, you will never fool the Holy Spirit of God. Hey, Manashe, just heard the Holy Ghost say, every man stands naked before me. Oh, there is nothing here. This is, there is nothing that, 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 that's like camouflage. You can't be like a Bermuda lizard. No, 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 no. You can't climb the tree and be grayish brown or be green in color or be multicolor. No, God looks, the Holy Spirit pierces and he sees exactly what's going on. Abba, yeshata. Mm. Church, listen, don't cancel out your own blessings, watch this, by doing the right things with the wrong heart. Mm. Keep your heart tender and tuned in to the heart of God. Let's look at verses 2 and 3. And he, that's Jonah, prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was this not my saying when I was yet in my country? <laughs> Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish. For I knew, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repentest thee of evil. Oh, Lord. Therefore now, O oh Lord, take, I beseech you, just do it, God. Just do it. Just do it. Take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. This foolish boy. Listen to him. It is unbelievable to hear how Jonah is thinking. Yet it is written, and hence I believe it. <laughs> Jonah basically says, God, I told you I didn't want to obey your will because of how merciful you are, God. God, you're so forgiven, and I can't stand it. <laughs> well, you should just kill them. I knew it, I knew it, that you would show them mercy. I knew that you would forgive them, God. God, I'm, I'm angry at them. Can, can you please be as angry with them as I am? Lord, 
said, mercy. Come on now. Come on now. Let's not perpetrate. Don't perpetrate around here. We all been there some, uh, uh, just one point in our life. I'm going to just say one. I can see a couple of times myself. But anyway, just one. When I was saying, my God, can you, can you lightning like hit him now? You know, hit him on the left side. Hit him upside the head. God, God suck him, God. Just, yeah. We've all been there. <laughs> Listen. We are now listening to an immature and selfish prophet. The prophet, I said his prop, yeah. he's a prophet. I said immature, selfish prophet. So all those prophets uh -huh. come in the island, call for your money, call for your jewelry, and you know you ain't got money for your rent. That's an immature and selfish prophet. Ain't the first one? Got one right here. <laughs> The prophet Jonah says to God, since you didn't kill them, kill me. <laughs> he says, I would rather be dead than to be an eyewitness to the mercy you show them. What? Is this guy a, a godly person or what? Jesus. All right, all right. <laughs> hey, this is some vicious stuff. So, you know, if you say I stand out of the church because the, the church people are not nice sometimes, Jonah weren't nice. But we carry it on. And God will still get the glory. Oh, yes, he will. Verse 4, let's take a look at it. Then said the Lord, doest thou well to be angry? <laughs> God is taking a direct hit at the spirit that is behind the ministry of Jonah. Because he's basically saying, how you feeling now? How's that anger working out for you? You having a good day, Jenna? Is that place of anger a place where you should be? Hmm? And as I thought on this, I, I shook my head and I said, no wonder his book, the book of Jenna answer. <laughs> I said, no wonder it's no chapter five. I can only imagine what chapter five would have had. Do you think God will want us to witness the further decay of his man, Jonah? Who was gifted, listen, who was gifted to speak, but had the wrong spirit of anger within him. What you said, preacher, you can be a gifted speaker and be angry. Mm -hmm. You can be a gifted speaker and God use you, but your dirty attitude and your dirty spirit um, causes that you don't get any better, even though the people are, who are witnessing and under your ministry can get the, the message and be blessed, can fall out. But God is still looking at the messenger to see whether he's going to bless the messenger. My Lord. Mm-hmm. And so he was gifted to speak, but had the wrong spirit of anger within him so that he canceled out the effectiveness of his own ministry. That's why, listen, I don't care what people say to me. I really, really, really don't care what people do because I value, hear me, Jordan, I value what God has given me so much that I'll not let anybody's attitude make my attitude stink in the nostrils of God. Are you hearing me? Huh? That no matter what they say, no matter what they do, I'm going to constantly make sure that my reins are being tried by the Spirit of God and that as he tries me, he finds that I'm worthy enough not only to deliver a message, but to be blessed by the message myself. <laughs> Hear me. Whenever, whatever, whatever ministry you are involved in, the best way to hurt your ministry is to do what you do and carry anger within you. It just won't work. You've got many people left church because they're angry rather than just sitting still, letting God's word heal. Let, it, let the word of God heal you. No, you're angry because of this person, angry. Anger ain't going to help you. Takes me to point number two, covered by God. Covered by God, verse 5. So Jonah, look at him now. He's angry. He's mad. He's wondering why God's being God. He's, <laughs> verse 5. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city and there made him a booth. Like he's having his own, own, own 24th of May. 
for me today. You just make a boot. Right, right, right. Set under a boot, set under it in the shadow till he might see what will become of the city. He's not sitting there to intercede. He's not sitting there to say, Lord, save him, Lord. He's sitting there to watch the city burn. He wants the city to be destroyed. My Lord, my Lord, when you, when you sulk and want to have your own immature way, this, this is Joanna right here. Note that he sits on the east side of the city. He sits where he can patiently wait out the 40 days. He wants the 40 days to be over so he can watch Nineveh destroyed. He had the wrong spirit when he entered, and he has the wrong spirit as he's leaving. Now, it says that he built a booth. This word booth comes from the Hebrew word kuka, kuka, meaning temporary shelter. Now, in study, it is said that this booth was made very quickly, and it was not at all that strong. <laughs> It was also made in such a fashion that it was vulnerable to the heat and to the wind. Once again, Jonah is situated in a temporary place with his permanent bad attitude. He's he looking at Nineveh. He won't dare look at himself on the ship, dare look at himself in the belly of the well. No, it's always us Ninevites, always us Ninevites. Let's talk about the booth. Now let's talk about his places of staying, of refuge. The ship was a temporary place. The belly of the fish was a temporary place. The booth is a temporary place. Why is, catch this church, why he gonna be satisfied with temporary things? Why is he going to be satisfied with something that will not last? I know about you, but that's why I'm in the kingdom of heaven. That's why I am in the kingdom of God. That's why I'm walking and talking with my Savior all the day long, because I am already involved in something that is not temporary. For if you are a child of the kingdom of heaven, you are already in an eternal place. Uh, the life that you live is only going to be transferred to a different place called eternity. And so my thing is, why build a temporary life on earth? Why build that? Why are we not building our spiritual man? Church, it would seem that the heart of God towards Jonah is that he really wants Jonah to change. you got to see that. <laughs> this is key. Jonah doesn't want God to have mercy on the Ninevites. God keeps having mercy on Jonah. Shut by your condiobo seed. Huh? Now, you remember in the past sermon, they're fasting. Jonah looked like he's fasting to you. They, they, they repenting. Jonah, look, he, he telling off God. He's telling God off. My God, my God. <clears throat> but God is so patient. He's so loving and kind. He's patient with Jonah, still giving Jonah another chance. So God does not allow Jonah, watch this, yo, to build a permanent place where he is angry. Ha! Ah. Mm. Don't, hear me, hear me, don't build anything when you're angry. Yeah, if you got an attitude, don't build it, don't build it, don't build it. Yeah. Huh? If you got a problem with this person, a problem with, don't build it, don't build it, don't build it, don't build it. No, don't build. My Lord, don't build, bend, bend down at the altar. Ask God to fix you. Ask God to clean you. Huh? Huh? Don't build something when you are angry. And that's why, you know, I give myself a time limit. Because <laughs> I do get angry. Oh, let me confess. 
But I recognize that if I'm going to build anything, if God is going to bless the creativity that I have, I got to step out of that anger mood. I got to lay it down. I got to crucify myself. I got to carry my cross now. God, just carry the cross. Don't let them do it. Don't let them take you there because there's more work for you to do. There's glory to, oh, there's glory ahead after this. There shall be glory. Uh huh. Yeah, don't build something when you're angry. It won't last. It won't last. It may linger, but it won't last. Verse 6. And the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him. Look at God. You're so nice, God. To deliver him from his grief. You know, I might have said, stay there, soak foolish person. But no, God said, no, let, me, let me deliver him from, watch this. Now, now this, is, this is the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So you better catch it. Ah, because it's not in my notes. God builds the gourd to deliver him from his grief. Not, the Bible doesn't say particularly, even though it'll do so, deliver him from the heat and the sun, the wind. It will do that, but there's something more dangerous than the weather conditions. There, there's something more dangerous than the heat and the wind, and that's what's going on within Jenna. And so God delivers him from uh, his grief. The shade is there. You know how you need that umbrella. Mercy, it's been hot this week. Hmm? So Jenna was exceeding glad of the gourd. Oh! So Mr. Rudy Pence, Mr. Disrespect God, his glad when his rescue. Mr. I'm going to tell you off God in your face. You hear this? The Ninevites haven't done that. Jonah is telling God off in his face. God still rescues him. Lord have mercy. Now church, <laughs> I want you to see the nature of God, the God we serve. Look at the actions of a merciful God. Could it be, could it be, could it be that God is trying to teach a journal of the Old Testament, a New Testament beatitude? A New Testament beatitude. You know, Matthew 5, 7. Yee! Blessed are the mm -hmm, merciful, but they shall obtain mercy. Could God be trying to show Jonah mercy so that Jonah will truly have a change of heart and desire mercy for the Ninevites? It should have been that Jonah said, you know what, maybe this heat had gotten to my head. I was telling off God a few minutes ago. I must have lost my mind. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Uh, you could have, you could have threw me back in another fish, God. God, you could have put me on another, another ship. You could have put me on a ship by myself and sunk the ship, shipwrecked the sink. But God, you are just so merciful. And they are in that mood of being merciful. He would say, now I understand. Now I understand what you want to do with the Ninevites. They don't deserve it. Neither do I deserve it. But God, look at you, God. You are merciful unto me. And God, because I'm just so pleased with your mercy. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. God, you're so wonderful. And God, now that I I feel how wonderful you are. God, be wonderful to the Ninevites. They don't deserve it either. My, my, my. Huh? Huh? God is trying to teach his servant. But I, I must admit I'm confounded, even dumbfounded, to understand that God will use a servant in a backslidden mindset to complete his will. So maybe God can't use President Trump. I ain't saying nothing else. I'm, I'm sticking right here in Bermuda. Huh? So many times we want the perfect leader, the perfect preacher, the perfect servant. I'm going to tell you something that no matter who is in the yellow house, the blue house, the white house, your house, whoever's house, I'm telling you God is sovereign and God is yet. God ain't taking no vacation. He's not going to time sharing. He hasn't going to come to Bermuda where the waters are the best bluish, greenish wow, waters there are in the world. Uh -uh, God is still on his throne. God is still in charge. Come on, Jonah. God is trying to show you something. 
Yeah, trying to change Jonah's heart so that he can desire Nineveh to be saved. God allowed the gourd to grow up and cover Jonah. Ha! God just wants some of us to grow up. Because you only can truly cover someone once you're covered. Mm -hmm. That was a nugget right there. I didn't have it in my notes. Let's look at the word gourd. Comes from the word kiakweon. Kiakweon. A plant that grows very quickly with large leaves that provide a legitimate cover from the heat of the day. A plant that grows very quickly with large leaves that provide legitimate cover from the heat of the day. God will cover you, you all. He, he'll cover you. God was still willing to protect his servant. Why? Well, perhaps God wants Jonah, Mr. Jonah, Prophet Jonah, to understand that just as he welcomed relief from God, even in his rebellious state, so did the people of Nineveh. Yes, they're rebellious, but God is merciful. Come on, you may not have rebelled like the Ninevites, but one day you were in a rebellious state called sin, and aren't you glad that God had mercy on you? Now, so that Jonah would not <laughs> think himself so special <laughs> as to deserve the mercies of God without changing his attitude. Let's read the next verse. Ow, this story just gets me. Verse 7. <laughs> but God. Yeah, I was merciful to you last night. <laughs> but God <laughs> prepared a worm. That's a little worm. A, not a snake, <laughs> not a centipede, just a little wiggly, 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 it can quickly be destroyed because it's very sensitive. There you go. I feel. There you go. God wanted you to be mighty. God had plans that your ministry be significant. But you, I feel. The worm just got in. The worm just got in. Huh? So listen to this. You cannot allow an angry person to be comfortable in their angry place. That's right. God's going to use you, but he ain't going to applaud you. <laughs> Here's another point. You cannot allow an angry person to feel prosperous when their attitude is venomous. Oh, yeah, God's going to use you, but he's going to let you know he's displeased with you at the same time. <laughs> Not only this, God will not continue to bless your mess <laughs> so that you think that your mess exists with the approval of God. In rebellion, well, God built me, God built me a shed. I'm got a house. I'm got a new car. I said in rebellion. <laughs> you can get whatever you get. But if it's in rebellion, it's not going to please you. It's not going to last. Or it's not going to be prosperous in the way that God would have it to be prosperous. You got a new car. Let me give you an example. You got a new car. God had you wanted you to have that new car so you can carry more people to church. But because it's new, you don't want everybody to mess up. So you don't let it mess up your seat. So you don't let them get a new car. Well, the car, you got it. But it's not prosperous in the things of God. There's a difference. God will not approve of your mess. And that takes me to my final point, point number three. Contemplate the lesson. Contemplate the lesson. Verse 8. And it came to pass, when the sun did arise, that God prepared a vehement east wind. <laughs> I got to stop there. Ace boy sitting at the east gate. Uh -huh. 
God said, it's real. Go get him. Oh, why ya? Woo wee. God knows exactly where you're sitting. He, he knows exactly where you're comfortable. And he will send the wind of adversity, of uncomfortableness your way in order that you don't become so puffed up in your wrong and think that you're being blessed when you're really in a mess. God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat, you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> beat, yeah, you know when the sun beats down on you. Yeah. <laughs> That's a different level. Beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted. Oh, he fainted. He, he lost consciousness just for a moment mm -hmm. and wished himself to die. There he goes again. There he goes. Ooh, catch this, church. Yeah. Anger will lead you yeah. to have a suicidal mindset. Yeah. All right, all right, Seaman. All right, Seaman. All right. No, you may not kill yourself naturally, but you will kill your ministry. You will kill your testimony. Why? Because you're still angry at so and so. Hey, you see how I had to go to be angry? Ain't nothing beautiful about being angry. You will end up killing yourself, killing your ministry, killing your testimony. This is what's happening with Jonah. That's why there's no Jonah chapter 5. The son beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished himself to die and said, listen to Mr. Brilliant. Right? Remember, God has gifted him to speak, mm -hmm. but because it's in self, mm -hmm. look, at what he, look at what he says. It is better for me to die than to live. Well, I tell you. So, so right here in this verse, hear me, he is saying, interpretation, God, I still don't want to obey you. He, he's still saying, well, God, now that I spoke to him, I don't want you to be merciful to him. I want you to kill him. And if you don't want to kill them, kill me, because I don't want to see you save them. What kind of? See, that, see, that's why I know perfect people. We ain't perfect in church. God is still working on me. <laughs> if, you were all in church, if you all were in church right now, I'd say, touch your name and tell him, he's working on me, he's working on me. Hey, he's working on me. I see that, I see that. My miss. Come on, Peter, don't refuse to touch. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> He'd be like, no, we're six feet, we're six feet, Pastor. God is working on me. Amen. See, we've got to, and, and here's my thing. This is always my attitude. If we can do wrong but have the right attitude, don't be grumpy. Just say, oh, man, God, I messed up. Fix me. God loves that person. A contrite spirit, a heart that's tender, a heart that, does, oh, man, did I mess up again? Did I miss that? It's not the end of the world. But if you don't want to admit when you're wrong, if you don't want to admit when you should that you are incorrect regarding a situation, you are going to be hardened. And God won't be able to use you. Come on now, I feel like talking just for a moment here. If we want to be clay in the potter's hand, then we've got to be malleable. Uh, he, he needs to mold us and he needs to shape us. And we never can get to a shape. We can never get to a place where we think that God can make us. God can break us. Well, if you're in the hand of God, God, there will be times in your life when you will have to get on, get back on, get back on the potter's wheel and say, God, it's dizzy on this wheel, but I'm going to stay on the wheel. God, I'm losing my balance on the wheel, but I'm going to stay on the wheel. God, the outlook looks really crazy on the wheel, but I'm going to stay on the wheel. God, I think I'm going to fall off, but I'm going to stay on the wheel. And when you stay on the wheel, the potter will make you a new vessel again, a vessel unto glory, a vessel unto honor, a vessel that is full of the glory of God. Stay on the wheel. Stay on the wheel. Stay on the wheel. Yeah, 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 he does. Uh-huh. So listen, listen. He wants to die for the wrong reasons, because I want to die too. I, I want to die to my flesh. I, I, I've got to die to my logic. I can't have Maria's mind 
and the mind of the Holy Spirit at the same time. I got a grasp for the Holy Spirit, say, come within me, so that then I can have the mind of the Holy Spirit, the mind of Christ. But if I, I keep on botting in, that's going to be me. My Lord. All right, let's carry on. Let's carry on. So we got the wind. God sends an east wind, right? <laughs> Let me tell you this. We serve a God of wind. <laughs> God created wind power. Come on now. How do you remember when we were in Hawaii and we were on the plane and we saw all the windmills? I was fascinated. There's a line of water on the mountain line. Wind power, wind power. Fascinating. Yet can I tell you that before there's windmill power, there's the wind that's needed, and God is the one that created the wind in the first place? God created wind power. God knows how to command the wind power. Just as God prepared the storm on the sea, prepared the fish in the sea, God prepares this vehement wind. This is the third, third, who is three? Third opportunity that Jonah is being given to change. Come on, you all. This is, this is the third time. Now, the wind is described as being vehement, vehement. This word comes from the Hebrew word, carry she, carry she, meaning harsh, hot. Sultry, silent, and silent means uncertain. You know where the wind's coming from. Like sneak, sneak, sneak. <laughs> you, you see directly. This by Jonah is so ridiculous. He thinks he's in charge. He thinks he wants to. He got to know everything. Yet God is saying, "I'm preparing a wind, and you won't even know what way it's coming from." But it's coming for you. God allows the wind to be so fierce and the heat to beat on Jonah's head so much that Jonah fainted. Once again, Jonah is wishing to die. Rather than humble himself, he wants to die. <laughs> Some people, rather than humble themselves, say, I'm sorry, maybe return to church. No, just die. I'm going to die out here. I'm going to be right out here all by myself. Just going to die. <laughs> Rather than admit he was wrong, he wants to die. I tell you what, there are those who will never yield and I was wrong. And will always have proof as to how wrong you are. <laughs> Thank God I learned how to be wrong. <laughs> so that, I'm even comfortable with being wrong, but I tell you what, I know how right I am when it comes to the word of God and when it comes to the study of God. Ain't nobody going to touch that, huh? But there is a confidence that I have in the glory of God's word. That's why I got to keep myself clean because that's the only time I can be safe. The safest place to be is in the will of God. To a journal. Watch this. To a journal, you always will be a Ninevite. Whether you repent, say you're sorry. No, 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 they're going to go back to the year 1481. When, I, when Uncle Subab and Auntie Mememe, and this happened, and you will never forget it. But you just keep on building a temporary shelter. And God wants true deliverance. You got to forget some things. I need. I think I'm speaking to somebody. I, I'm sorry it happened. It's true that it happened. It's true that uh, you were hurt and all that. But you got to move on in order that God gets the glory out of your story. My God. And so verse nine here. Listen to it. <laughs> and God said to Jonah, "Doest thou well to be angry for the gore?" And he said. I do well to be angry even unto death. Look at this fool. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it right now. Right now. This man is a fool. God trying to teach him, and he's still talking back to God. Ever had that? You, you know you know right. And yet you're telling the person, and they've got to come back at you. Foolishness. In other words, God is saying to Jonah, 
Jonah, how is that? God tickles me. God is saying, Jonah, how is that anger working out for you? Like, how's, how's that working? Are you, are you feeling better? Are you looking better? No, bro. You're looking better. <laughs> Jonah, how does it feel to be angry? Watch this. At the shelter I made for you. <laughs> Jonah, how does it feel to be angry when I step in and save you from certain death? <laughs> God keeps saving him. And he's still saying, kill me. <laughs> God, church, he is so patient a teacher. For he is yet trying to teach Jonah how the Ninevites deserved a chance just as he was given a chance to Jonah. See, that's why, no, thank you, Holy Ghost. That's why Jonah wanted to die. Because he is aligning himself with the Ninevites. And he's saying, well, kill, kill them, kill me, kill us all. My God, what kind of person? I don't want, you, I don't want your ministry to flourish. I don't care what happens to mine. Let's all be, be destroyed. Let's all perish together. What? Have mercy, Lord, have mercy. My Lord. Hmm. Verse 10. Hmm. Then said the Lord, thou hast pity on the board, for the which thou hast not labored. Neither made it grow, which came up in the night and perished in the night. God is saying, Did, didn't you appreciate what it was? Didn't you appreciate the guard? It saved you from the heat and the wind. I made it. You didn't make it. God here is really trying to tell Jonah off. It's telling Jonah off. God is saying to Jonah, you, you had no problem when I gave you shelter. But how come you, don't, how come you got a problem with these Ninevites? God is saying, you, you didn't cause the shelter. I did. You don't have to save the Ninevites. I am. That's what God's saying. All I want you to do is obey and tell the message. You're not going in there to save them. God will save them. That's a word right there. All we can do is give the message. All we can do is preach the word. All we can do is read the word, study the word. All we can do is praise and worship God. And then God has to do the drawing, ironically, by his wind. The wind of the Holy, there you go, Holy Spirit. You better thank God that the Holy Spirit is yet on the earth within every God-filled believer. Because the day is coming when there'll be no more Holy Spirit. When the rapture occurs, it'll be no drawing spirit. It'll be too late. And so God is showing us through his servant Jonah that the wind that comes, it's a wind so that you will change your mind change your heart and the Holy Spirit is here right now for you to change your heart and change your mind so that you can make it into the kingdom so that you can become a child of God even now the analogy is heavy uh-huh and so Jonah you didn't provide a way of escape God did and so that's God saying the same thing. You ain't got to say it in the right. I'm doing that. Jenna, you have a lot of nerve. You want everything your way. I give and I take away and I'm still God. And whether I have mercy on the Ninevites or not, I am still God and God alone. In other words, Jenna, mind your business. <laughs> just, 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 just shut up. Shut it up. Shut it down. Say what I told you and be on your way. Get to stepping. Now, final verse, verse 11, it reads, and should not, look at God, this is the conclusion. <laughs> and should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between the right hand and the left hand? And also much cattle. In other words, I saved you. And you, you know how to you should know how to discern your right from your left. If 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 you Jonah, I hear you go, if you Jonah are worth saving, just one of you 
in your rebellious state, but why can't I? Why should not God save all these Ninevites who are in, at this moment, a repentful mindset? If God spared <laughs> an ungrateful, rebellious, and immature Jonah, why ought not he spare a city that's fasting and praying and grieving? They are more repentful than the disrespectful Jonah. Hmm. And to add to this point, Jonah, you should know better. Whereas these people did not have the knowledge that you have. They don't know. They don't know how to discern like you do. But no, you're Mr. Deep Wonder. You, know, you, you, you grow up. You, you a prophet. But you're wrong. Jesus. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, listen, the Ninevites, they didn't know the ways of God. Jonah did. The Ninevites have great wealth and plenty of cattle, and yet they rested all they had down in order to obey God. Everything they had, they laid it down. They said, God, we want to escape your wrath. Yet we have Mr. Jonah telling off God, saying, kill me and go ahead, kill me. Can you tell me Jesus people can't be, church people can't go off? They can go off. They can lose their minds. They can. Jonah, his story ends in him, watch this, still being angry. He, his story ends with him still being angry. We don't know if he ever repented. We don't know. We know the, the, the Ninevites did. We don't know what happened to Jonah. Jesus, Jesus God, God wrote him out of the play. You know, you know, you go on summer vacation or, or whatever the season stories back in the old days. I'm dump these guys today. They watch Netflix. Back in the day, the season ends for it, right? And if the person dies in real life, they write him out of the script. That's what God did with Jonah. Wrote him out of the script. Now hear me. I, I'm afraid that his anger, Lord have mercy, stripped him of a longer ministry. The brother could talk. Think, think about it. I want you guys to think, think. Think how smooth his talking must have been. How convincing that he convinced people he hated to repent. Come on, don't miss it. In other words, let me put it how it should be, the anointing of God that used to rest in the Old Testament and then lift, rested on him to complete the mission and then lift it, and he still was in remission to the will of God. Hmm? Isn't that something? And so his anger marred the ministry he might have been known for. His anger became the whole mark of his ministry. Every time I hear people preach about Jonah, I just go, mm-hmm, you, you ain't preached in chapter 4, you ain't preached in chapter 3. Ha-ha! <laughs> Church director, never let the sun go down on your anger. No, 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 no. Work it out, work it out. Your testimony is not worth it. Your service to the kingdom is not worth it. Your ministry is not worth it. Let your anger go and watch God grow you in a way that you could not imagine. I, I tell you, that's a good song. There is such peace in the will of God. And the peace is not an external peace but it's from heaven divine and it becomes internal. No matter what storm is occurring in your life, don't be Jonah. You want to end it with peace. Times are rough. Times are different. We've never experienced the wind of Corona before. Yet I can tell you, because I have experienced the Prince of Peace, even Corona got to take a back seat to the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Whatever adversity you're going through, God is able. I want to caution you, church. Be angry, but don't stay there. 
experience the anger moment, but let it pass. Don't ever say or think, well, God has used me, so I must be okay. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. God is piercing with his laser beam vision to see what the motive is for that which you do. Might I say, Shekinah, don't be a grumpy Christian. For real, for real, for real. Get over it. Get beyond it. Because there are Ninevites that need the message that only God's servants have. We've got work to do in Bermuda. And to yield Bermuda the peace. That's, Bermuda's just looking for peace. Be it Black Lives Matter, be it this ridiculous thing of legalization of marijuana, they are looking for peace. But I'm gonna tell you, nothing will be peaceful without the Prince of Peace. You can march 24 seven. You can march every day, every week. You can, what? Without the peace of God, listen, you can even come to church every week. My question is, do you have that wonderful overriding peace of God within you? Be angry, don't sin. Don't take it further than it ought to go. Don't let it kill your ministry. There is work to do. And so with that in mind, I want to offer an opportunity to someone out there. You don't know Jesus to the pardoning of your sins. You have not made him your choice. Well, today, today you can make him your choice. Because really, in order not to be angry, you need help. I need help. <laughs> I need Jesus. I need the prince to step in. Prince Jesus, help me now. I need your peace right now. And if you don't have peace, if you don't have Jesus, you can't have the peace I'm talking about. So if you're not a Christian, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, why not accept him today? What hinders you? Ain't nothing that hinders you except you. Just like with Jenna. We have no excuse. We hinder ourselves. So get yourself out of the way. Stop thinking about what tomorrow's going to do and what your friends are going to say and what you can't do anymore. Stop it. You're, you're killing it. You're killing it. But while the wind of the Holy Spirit is blowing right now, while the wind of the Holy Spirit is whispering to you, this is your time. If you're a sinner and you want Jesus Christ to come into your heart today so, so that your life will be a life of victory no matter what, I want you to repeat the sinner's prayer after me. Dear Lord, God, I thank you for this day. God, I am a sinner. Yet today, I believe on the work that your son Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. I believe that Jesus shed his blood for my sins that I may be forgiven. God forgive me for all that I have done that displease you. And God, I ask that you will come into my heart right now. Wash my heart. Cleanse me. And I shall be new. God, I thank you. And I now believe that your son, Jesus Christ, is my Lord and Savior. And I will obey you for the rest of my life. Thank you, God, for salvation. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Wow, wow, wow. Listen, if you did that, welcome to the family of God. Welcome, we are family. This is like eternal blood connection. 
This is better than the earthly blood. This is eternity. I want you to email me at swimatlogic.bm. You'll see it right, written right in the comment section right there. Email me at swim at logic.bm. Let me know the choice that you made today. And we will celebrate with you. We will reach out to you and communicate with you as soon as possible.